Last week, at School of Visual Arts Film Theatre in Manhattan, took place a screening of a film, Women of 1915, produced and directed by filmmaker Barrett Maronian. The screening was organized by AGBU. The film was made possible by support of many Armenian organizations, as well as numerous individual donors. Speaking on behalf of AGBU, Natalie Gabrielian welcomed the audience. Before the screening, the attendees were greeted with beautiful singing by Husher Pastikian, whose performance is also the soundtrack for the film. Being a part of this film meant a lot to me. Um, Bared and I, our relationship started back when he was working on Orphans of, um, of the Genocide. And he asked me to, if, he w if I'd be willing to lend him some of my music that I had already recorded and released on my first album, to which I, of course, uh, said yes. And, and since then, we've been partnering together. And so when he uh, set out on this journey and asked me to collaborate with him, I, of course, was more than willing and excited to record some new material specifically for the film. Um, I think it's incredible work that he's doing uncovering these stories of these women who made such an impact during such a horrific time in our history, both Armenian women and non-Armenian women alike. Um, and so being able to contribute my part uh, through music uh, really means a lot to me and I'm, I'm very glad to have been a part of the film. Perched above the vast Armenian plateau sits the majestic Mount Ararat, where God gave humanity a second chance, where a prodigious birth erupted, out of a red reed, a god was born. Vahag was his name, the god of lightning and thunder who uprooted evil dragons and shaped the Milky Way. Out of a stream, the goddess Astrik was born. Little Star was her name, the goddess of love and beauty, fertility and water, who begot the red rose and was the guardian of the white dove. In these skies, Vahag seized Astrik's heart. Their love reigned peace and harmony upon the Armenian plateau. This is the woman of 1915. This is where she lived, loved, and prayed with her children. This is where her people built monasteries, communities, schools, and multiplied. But wars and plunders robbed her of her homeland. Her husband snatched away, her children orphaned. She stood witness and victim to unimaginable indignities. but her resilience remained intact. Adding to the film's emotional depth was a powerful and touching voiceover narration by Gloria Sanders. Not just as an Armenian, but as a woman, I was honored to lend my voice to this project. The remarkable stories of these women, that no matter what atrocities they faced, they were able to succeed and become resilient, was a story that needed to be told and I'm so glad that Bared Maronyan did just that. 2015 marked the centennial of the Armenian Genocide. And as important as it is to never forget, it's important to remember to move forward and to celebrate that we as Armenians are still here today. Women of 1915 is a documentary that unveils the role of the Armenian and non-Armenian women of the era and the horrors they lived through during the first massive genocide of 20th century. The documentary highlights the integral role the Armenian women played in their respective communities. The heroic humanitarian women advocates who came to their aid from around the world, some of whom even dying at the war-ravaged Ottoman Empire, to empower the Armenian women as pillars of war-torn, post-genocide societies. During my research, I always ran into a phenomenon that was amazing, the fact that uh, behind every single orphan that was saved, there was a woman. 
it was a woman who saved the, the uh, orphan children of the genocide. Marunian set out to tailor women of 1915 to non-Armenian audience as means of instruction and to acknowledge the dedicated and unconditional support of many non-Armenian women who rallied to help their Armenian sisters. More importantly, you know, I found out that a lot of the times uh, these women were not necessarily Armenian. You know, non-Armenian women, you know, came all over from all over the world, especially from Scandinavia, United States, Canada, and they uh, dedicated their lives in saving women and children of Armenia during the genocide and after the genocide. So I thought I should highlight these women and put them under a spotlight and dedicate a, a whole film to these women. The structure of the film consists of eight parts, with the opening sequence following by chapters titled Gendercide, Gavur, an insulting term used to call Armenians, Forced Assimilation, Witness the American Dream, Absolute Humanitarianism, and Cultural Misappropriation. Beautifully crafted, film included new footage, imagery, and stories relating to the plight of Armenian women during and after the genocide. The stories highlighted individuals such as Danish missionary and key witness to Armenian genocide, Maria Jacobson, who wrote the diaries of a Danish woman, which is a documentation of the utmost significance for research of the Armenian genocide. For her humanitarian effort, Jacobson is known as Mayrik, for having saved many Armenians during the genocide. Aurora Mardiganyan, the daughter of a prosperous Armenian family living in Ottoman Turkey, also witnessed the deaths of her family members and was forced to march over 1,400 miles, during which she was kidnapped and sold into slave markets of Anatolia. With the help of Near East Relief, she was able to escape to New York City. While in US, she wrote and published a memoir titled Ravished Armenia, which was produced into a film in 1919 with Mardiganyan playing herself. Large section of the film was dedicated to the work of Near East Relief, an organization that has saved and cared for countless Armenian genocide orphans. The film captures many outstanding women's stories. One of them, Sarah Aronson, who was born in Palestine, which at the time was a province of Turkish-ruled Ottoman Empire. Sarah witnessed the Armenian genocide, and in her testimony, she described seeing hundreds of bodies of men, women, and babies being loaded into trains, and a massacre of up to 5,000 Armenians who were bound to the Pyramid of Thrones and set alight. One of the important highlights of the film was the story of legendary founder of Apple, Steve Jobs, whose mother, Clara Hakopian, along with her husband, Paul Jobs, adopted a Syrian-American baby and named him Steve. Clara Hakopian's mother, Victoria Artinian, was a genocide survivor, and Steve was raised in a shadow of that terrible heritage of Armenian genocide. The film also tells a story of Karen Yepe, a Danish missionary who, with the assistance of some Arab tribe leaders, up until 1928 rescued approximately 2,000 Armenian women and children from Muslim captivity. She helped establish special rescue homes in several locations, which helped put an end to the tragic and painful ordeal of countless Armenian women and girls, many of whom carrying tattoos on their faces to be identified as captives. Another interesting story in the film is about an extraordinary woman named Diana Abgar, author, humanitarian, and the first woman diplomat. Born in India in 1889, she married a businessman, Michael Abgar, and moved to Japan. Despite the fact that she had never been to Armenia, she found a strong connection with her ancestral home. The news of Armenian genocide sparks Diana's passion for humanitarian work in Armenia. In 1918, in a first independent Armenia, Diana Abgar was appointed Honorary Consul of Armenia to Japan. She became the world's first woman diplomat who was granted diplomatic passport and a seal of Armenia for her official use. Our and 45-minute documentary also included stories about the women who fought alongside men as equals. Women like Elizabeth Sultanian, 
and Khatun Yapujian, whose legacy has passed on to their future generations. The screening followed by Q&A with four-time Emmy-winning filmmaker Bared Marunyan, moderated by Huri Gudelekian, who is United Nations representative at Armenian Relief Society NGO. Bared Marunyan's both documentaries, Orphans of Genocide and Women of 1915, are very valuable not only for Armenians, but for all of humanity, as women depicted in this film serve as role models for men and women for many generations. Both of my films, Orphans of the Genocide and Women of 1915, deal with um, Armenian stories, you know, Armenian experiences, but in reality, they are of uh, universal um, proportions because um, in any genocide, be it the Holocaust or the Cambodian genocide or, or even the, the current or the latest genocide that we heard about committed by the um, ISIS, uh, the women went through the same experiences. They were universal experiences that women went through. And the message that I have in this film is ultimately to uh, stop genocide. That's the whole idea of the film. Because like I said, even though I deal with Armenian stories, Armenian experiences, but they are of experience that had happened to the Jewish women during the Holocaust, the Cambodian women uh, during the Cambodian genocide, and the Sudanese genocide, or anything that's going on today or has gone, has happened, women have experienced the same thing. So it is a, it is a universal story. It is a human story. And it's not a tragic story. It's true that genocide, genocides are tragic, tragic. But we are emphasizing on the survival factor of this film. After the screening, during the light reception, audience shared their impressions. Barrett Maronian has done more to support highism than anybody else I know. His f documentaries have awakened the Armenian and order populations to the value of what the genocide was really all about. And I congratulate him for his excellent work. The screening was one of many AGBU's upcoming cultural events. We are very happy uh, to be sponsoring uh, uh, and organizing this uh, great event um, and presenting this very touching uh, and inspiring film to our audiences. And I also wanted to um, invite you all to our upcoming events. This year we are co-sponsoring the socially relevant film festival and the screening of Crowds of the Desert that will take place on March 15th um, at the Cinepolis Theatre. And then on April 5th, we will be hosting an ethno-jazz band from Armenia, Mikhail Voskanyan and friends, and with a special guest, Sevana Chakarian from uh, Collective Metz Bazar, Paris-based band. And of course, I would like to mention that we are still accepting uh, applications for this year's musical Armenia program. So if you are a musician or a music lover, please uh, come and apply for our program. You can you know, attend uh, lectures on the history of uh, Armenian music from medieval to contemporary, take one-on-one -on -one lessons um, with the best professors and musicians in Armenia, tour the country, uh, attend concerts and museums, um, and just have a great time in our homelands. We very much 